Hey everyone, Forrest here with Rocky Mountain School of Photography, and today I wanna to take a look at my favorite backup utility for Windows users. So I prefer a program called SyncBack Free. It's free, you can download it down in the description, and I and our students have been using it for years with lots of success. Um, really, its failure rate is almost zero. I would say zero, and it's a great utility for copying the contents of one hard drive over to another hard drive. Now, generally, we recommend SyncBack is used to back up your main photo drive to your backup photo drive. And if those things sound new to you and you think, well, why would I need a main photo drive or a backup photo drive? Check out the video up there in the corner where I overview backing up. It's definitely important to understand the concept behind this before we get into the specifics of the software. Once you've watched that video though, now we need to look at how to actually do this. Now, one thing that's really important to understand on a Windows computer that's different from a Mac is that Windows associates letters to certain external drives that you plug into the computer. And if left at the defaults, the letters that get assigned to those different drives will be different depending on the order that you plug them in. Now this can be a huge problem because if you plug in your main photo drive first and say the computer gives it the letter E and then you plug in your backup photo drive and it gives that backup drive the letter F, if we teach SyncBack to always back up the E drive to the F drive, that's all well and good for that first backup. But if the next time we go to backup, we plug in the backup drive first and then the main drive and the letters get switched, you can actually overwrite the things that you meant to back up when running the backup because SyncBack only remembers take this letter drive and mirror it to this letter drive. So the first thing we need to do before using SyncBack is ensure that our letters on our drives are set properly. So to change our drive letters, it's very straightforward. What we're gonna do is go down to the start menu. And this is true in Windows 11 or Windows 10. And I'm just gonna type the word computer management. And that should bring up this computer management section here. I'll go ahead and open that. And then inside of computer management, I'm gonna to go to disk management. This is where we can choose kind of some operations with our actual hard drives. Now you wanna be real careful in here, follow my instructions exactly, because there are some big problems you can create for yourself doing weird stuff inside of computer management. But in here, I will see that I have my main photo drive and my backup photo drive plugged in. Now, right now, we can see that the letters that have been assigned to these two drives are based on the order that I plug the drives in, and we don't want that. We want to assign a permanent letter to each of these drives. Now, do note that drive letter associations are specific to this computer. So when I go get a new computer, it's going to forget the letters that these had. So this is something that you need to do whenever you buy a new computer or whenever you buy a new hard drive. Now with that said, what I'm gonna do is right click on my main photo drive and I'm gonna go to change drive letter and paths. And it's gonna pop up this little box. I'm gonna go to change and I'm gonna set this drive letter to be Z. I like to start at the end of the alphabet because then we know even if you had 25 things plugged into your computer, you're not gonna run out of letters. So we'll say drive Z, we'll say okay. And it's gonna say this might mess with stuff. Now this might mess with stuff. If you have programs that are remembering that you have things living on the drive E or on the drive F, and we are changing the letter of the drive to be Z, those programs may not know where those files are. So my recommendation is this is something that you do to new hard drives, brand new out of the box. It's one of the first things you do is you go ahead and change their drive letters so that no program learns about any of the files on the drive in any other letter. It, it always knows that they're Z. In fact, if you ever come to one of our professional training programs, we uh, basically do this on day one of our programs. We have everyone get out their hard drives, we set the letters all correctly so that everything they do with that hard drive from then on has the proper letter. I'm gonna go ahead and hit yes here, and it's gonna assign it to Z. I'm gonna to go to my backup drive. I'm gonna do the same thing, right click, change drive letter and paths. I'm gonna to go to change, and this one I'm gonna to set to Y. We're gonna say okay, and say yes, and now that drive is Y. So from now on, this computer with these two hard drives, it will remember Z is the main photo drive and Y is the backup photo drive. Now. Again, I'm still gonna check that every time. And the way to check that is and make sure that your drives are proper is if you can just go to the start menu. And again, I, I'm a fan of just doing the shorthand. I'm just gonna type this PC. We're gonna open up 
this PC. And I'm just gonna ensure that yes, my backup photo drive is in fact Y and my main photo drive is in fact Z. Now, you don't have to do that first step. You can leave the drives the default of E and F or D and E or whatever they happen to be. Just make sure that before you run sync back, you are checking to make sure that sync back's letter associations are accurate to what you want the drives to do. All right, from here, I'm gonna go ahead and close this and I'm gonna open sync back. Now, SyncBack will let you save a profile. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a profile and then we can use that profile for every subsequent backup. So you only gotta do this once. So I'm gonna come down here and click the new profile button and I'm gonna give it a name. Now I'm gonna call it main photo drive to backup photo drive. And I'm even gonna put a little dash here that says Z to Y, just to really clearly let me know what I'm doing. I'm gonna hit next. I want this to be a mirrored backup. A mirror means that if we delete something off of the main drive, next time we go to backup, it's going to also delete it off of the backup drive. And that keeps things the same. The whole idea here is if our main photo drive dies, again, all this is discussed in that backup overview video, but the whole idea is that if our main photo drive dies, the backup photo drive, all we gotta do is rename it and change the letter to Z, and we can use it as if it was the main drive. So we want the two drives to be mirrored copies of one another. So I'm gonna choose mirror here, I'm gonna say next, and then I'm gonna click done. And it's gonna say this profile, yada, 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 okay, we hit okay, we okay through that. Now, that box that popped up is important. I wanna explain that a little bit more fully. When we set this to be a mirror, it is going to force the destination drive, in this case, the backup photo drive, to look exactly the same as the main photo drive. That means that if you have any files or folders on your backup drive that do not exist on the main drive, when you hit go, it is going to delete those files. It's going to make the backup drive look identical. And again, this is all discussed in my backup overview video. I mostly wanna focus on the software in this video today, but it's very key that you have matched pairs of hard drives, a main and a backup that can be exact duplicates of one another. In fact, I even recommend you have a third one to be a third copy, but two is generally enough for most people. Again, watch my backup video for more. Now from here, all we need to do is choose a source and a destination. So I'm gonna click this folder icon and set my source to be the main photo drive. And you'll notice it says main photo drive Z. So let's say select. I'm gonna set my destination to be the backup photo drive Y. Now, very important, notice it's not remembering the name. It's only remembering that it's gonna go Z to Y. So if you set that to be E to F or G to H or whatever your combo is, before you run the backup, you need to make sure that the main photo drive or whatever drive you're trying to back up is actually that letter and the destination drive is actually the correct letter. So I'm gonna hit okay. It's gonna probably pop up another warning. Yep, it's gonna go ahead and delete things that are on the destination but aren't on the source. Um, that's okay, we just talked about that. And now we have a profile. Now, every subsequent time you use this program, I'm gonna go ahead and close it, I didn't run it yet. Every subsequent time you use this program, that profile will be saved. So you don't have to do that again. And so each subsequent time, all you're gonna to have to do is open up SyncBack and select this profile and click the run button. Before you do that though, each time, I'm always gonna to go to this PC. And again, I like to just type it in because I'm me <laughs> and just verify that the main photo drive is in fact Z and the backup is Y or whatever letters you have chosen. Now, before you hit the run button, a couple little more disclaimers slash things that will make this work a little bit better. Make sure that no program is currently running that's accessing either the main drive or the backup drive. Um, I see a lot of people, they'll run this backup and they'll get a message that the backup failed. And the reason is that they were running Lightroom and they were editing photos while the backup was running. You wanna just let the backup run because you gotta think about it, this is gonna scan both hard drives. It's gonna compare what's on the main versus what's on the backup. And if it finds something that it needs to copy over, it'll copy it over. But if something's the same on both drives, it's gonna leave it alone. Well, if you're actively using Lightroom, you're gonna be changing things on that Lightroom main photo drive as the backup is running, which can lead to a backup failure. So if you see a backup failure, don't fret, just be take a moment, quit sync back, think, oh, Lightroom was running. Close Lightroom, reopen sync back, rerun it, and it should work fine. 
it will tell you a little result here, a last run. Um, you can schedule it to run at a subsequent time here with the next run option. I like to just run it manually. For me, it's just a super simple process of plug in my backup drive, plug in my main drive, open up sync back, select the profile, verify that the drive letters are correct, and then hit that run button. Now, when you click that, it's gonna give you a little okay button. You gotta okay through it. You just hit okay, it runs through. And again, it should go pretty quickly. Um, I have nothing on these drives, so it's gonna immediately say success. If this says result failed, you can click on that failed and you can open up a little log and it will actually show you what it failed on. And if that failed on says like my Lightroom catalog, then you probably had Lightroom running. So you all, this is super easy. And again, like I talked about in my backup video, I recommend you do this every single time you import pictures. Backing up is an integral part of our workflow as a digital photographer. It's super important to get in a really good habit of running this software. Pro tip, I actually have two profiles set up on my home sync back, one for my main photo drive to my backup photo drive, and another one for my main photo drive to my second backup photo drive, because I actually keep two backups. You could also use this to back up your internal hard drive or even just part of your internal hard drive, right? When we make a new profile and we give it a name, just give it a test name here, and we hit next, and we say mirror, and we say done, when you make a profile, you can set your source to anything. So you could pick a specific folder on your hard drive, on your internal hard drive. You could back up what's on your desktop. You can back up whatever you want. And then you just set your destination to be wherever it goes. Just keep in mind that if you set it to a mirrored backup, anything that's on that destination that's not on the source is gonna get overwritten. So do keep that in mind before you start using this software. All right, everybody, I hope you found that helpful. Again, watch my backup overview if this sounds new to you. I want everybody to have a full understanding of how backing up works and how it can fit into your workflow. If you like this video, definitely drop a like. If you have a question, leave it in the comment section down below and hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of future videos. Thanks, everybody.